Hey guys, I'm Adam and welcome back to my channel where I make a tabletop role playing game from scratch on camera. Before we start today's episode, I just want to remind you about the 96 likes. If you give me 96 likes, I will go ahead and release a video where I go through 96 pages that I have here before I actually started this RPG progress thing. Uh, there's a lot of RPG stuff, world building stuff, a uh, lot of weird stuff. So if you like that kind of thing, yeah, leave a like. And while you're already down there, please click the subscribe button because, well, basically because I want subscribers and that's, that's literally it. So yeah. Today's episode, we're going to talk about the weather. And we're not going to do small talk, but we're going to talk about how to generate weather effects. The first reason is because I want a certain ambience in my game. I want a backdrop for the game so that the GM has something that they can talk about in the beginning of the day. They can say, oh, today you wake up, it's sunny or today you wake up it's foggy or something. A small interesting description that the GM can say whenever it's needed. Now the second thing is that I want to disrupt the plans for the players a little bit. Uh, you see, the thing is that whenever I do a roleplay game and have a campaign that is very focused on mystery and information gathering and so on there's a lot of tidbits of information and stuff to do always there's this NPC you need to talk to there's this item you need to gather it's that book you need to research and there's in my games at least like 10 to 20 different things that the players should do at any game given point of time and the problem with this is that the players will, instead of doing these 10 to 20 things, they will discuss which things they should be doing. And so they will spend probably half an hour discussing which of these 10 to 20 different things they should be doing right now. I've understood, at least in my games, that if I go in as a GM and say, these five things will probably yield the mo best outcome for you. Then the players will disregard the rest and focus on these five things to do instead. And the discussion part will get a lot quicker and they will get moving through the story. And this will also happen here because I will have a lot of these secret doors and uh, cracks in the walls and uh, people that need help in the refuge and a lot of these tidbits of stuff to do and not enough time to do it but i therefore want to at least use on several several layers use different techniques to make the list of things to do for the players be slightly smaller and ever-changing and I don't want that burden to fall directly onto the GM itself like for instance if it's sunny and the weather is nice then that's the best time to go explore the castle grounds and the outside of the castle when it's extreme heat and you need to hide in the shadows that's the time when you will go inside and maybe go into the town part of the of the castle and look into the different houses that are there um, and when it's foggy then it's probably not good at all to go to the castle at all because there's enemies there's ru there's ruins and shaky grounds and so on and so then it's probably best to be at the refuge and help out the people that are there and so with a little bit of 
this, you will get always this long list of 20 things to do, but at any given day, it shifts from which things are most easy to do today. I'm not restricting the players from doing whatever they want to do, I'm just nudging them in different directions each day. Now one way to realize the weather um, in a role-playing game is to use random tables like this one. Here you can see this is a D100 table, so you roll D100, you get a value and you say yeah today it's overcast or today it's mildly cloudy or it's extremely hot today uh, something uh, and this works fine mostly but the problem here is that each of the outcomes are random each time and that means that you could first have blizzard then have extreme heat then have blizzard then have fog then have extreme heat, then have it snowing again. And that it, it can vary like this statistically. Statistically it won't, on average it won't, but statistically it's possible to get these wide mood swings in the weather. And weather changes slowly. So I don't want this kind of thing. And this is where the hex flower comes in, because that is a random table with memory. Now I'm not quite sure who invented the whole hex flower, but I'm hoping that it's the Goblin Senchman. I'll leave a link down to their webpage on the, in the description and you can check it out and check out all the details on how to use it and all the different uh, games and mini games and uh, generations that you can do with this kind of thing. So let's now start with explaining what this hex flower is. Now, uh, this is called a 19 hex flower, and that is because it's 19 hexagonal shapes in a sort of flower pattern. And when you start, let's see, you start in the middle, like this, you have six different outcomes. Let me explain. So each of these have, uh, when you're standing here, you have a token of some sort, and then you say you have six different outcomes. And if you roll a die like this, and I get a six, that means I move in this direction. And then next time I roll, I get another six, and then I still move in this direction. And if I roll again, I get a 2, that means I move in this direction, and so I go over here. And then you continuously move around on this board like this, and each of these different ones are a different outcome. And so as you can see here, if I move, uh, if I stand in this position, then only these six options here are an, a possible outcomes and none of these will ever be a possible outcome and so yeah, i'll show you how that works when we go back to the weather and how that will work now again there's some many ways of doing this but generally you if you move in either one of these directions if you stand here and you get a one you loop back over to here so you loop back over to this direction and and this also works both ways so going up here means you go come from here if you go down in this direction you go here the same goes for if you go let's say over from here here you will 
go to this side right here. And so this is how you navigate. You move around one piece by piece and then if you move on the outside of the border you end up on the other side over here. And then you can move down here and if you move over here you end up here again. Now with that said, how do we generate weather from this? Well, we can use something like this. Here we have one way of creating a weather generator. Now I made this uh, just as a mock-up and it could be that I'm going to use this specific one in my game but I have to test it and so on but yeah this is how it works. So basically if you start here in the center day one then there are six different outcomes right here and if I then say day one I can say today it's sunny the sun is shining it's a very nice day okay then I roll a four four means going down today it's sunny but it's mildly cloudy today now yeah, that's very nice and then I can roll again with a three I get yeah okay today it's overcast mostly overcast you get some bits of sun but mostly overcast and then one once more six then we move back up here and today it's sunny mildly or mildly cloudy and as you can see here, when I move around, I can say it goes to here, for instance, and say today it's raining and today it's foggy. And then if you move over here again, you see, yes, today it's uh, raining slightly and so on. Now, these things down here or, and up here, those mean different things. What happens here is that the X here means that you can't move here. So whenever you roll and if you're here and you end up with a four, you don't move. You just say either you re-roll or you just say it's the same as the day before. I would just re-roll, but that's just me. The same happens here. If you're moving up to a storm, then you re-roll to get a different outcome and get some of these. Uh, now, these arrows means that whenever you end up in one of these positions, you can move to these places instead of moving over here. So from here to cloudy, you end up with uh, a little bit of rain or to a little bit of sun. And this is how it works. You create smaller uh, things like this where you move around. And at this point, that means that whenever you have the sun here, if it's just sunny, normally sunny, then there's no way that there can be a storm coming, right? And you can't get extreme sun, then extreme rain. You can go up here and get slightly rainy, which is good. Uh, and you can go over here and go to sunny, but the rest is either sunny or very cloudy. And this is how it works. Now, going back to this here, you can change up this thing. And the Goblin Henchman uses 2d6 instead with this here, 
way of doing it. Now the original from Goblin Edgeman, as I said, looks like this, where you have a 2d6, uh, where you go from a 2 to 3 means this, 4 to 5 means this, 6 to 7, 8 to 9, 10 to 11, and then 12 is this direction. Now, if you do that, and you just roll two dice, you get a five here, that means this direction. And then you can roll again, and you get a seven, means this direction. Now, the advantage of doing it this way is that this way will generate a trend line. So, as you, can, as you might know, when you roll 2d6, the average will be seven, and it's more likely that you get a 7 than, for instance, a 12 or a 2. And so you will generate a trend line that goes in this direction. And that means that if we do it with a 2d6 here, it's not completely random which direction you're going, you're always almost going this direction that you're trending in this direction. So you're trending from going from around this sunny area over to raining, over to back to sun again. You could eventually go um, in different ways. It's completely possible to go in different directions, but generally you would go in this direction right here. And this is a very interesting thing that I'm going to explore a little bit more. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I haven't used it that much in my games, but I really want to do it. And I think that uh, my role-playing game would benefit from this kind of thing. So I'm going to try it and figure out how it works and so on. But yeah, um, this is how the hex flower works. And you can of course make it in many different things. Maybe going to use it for the tension, uh, for the NPCs in the refuge, maybe. And I'll maybe use it to generate the terrain outside of the castle if the players want to move outside of the castle. It could be. But yeah, this is basically how it works. Now, one last thing before I end it here, I want to just note down the different things that I want to, could happen with the weather. So, I mean, let's call it weather effects. So, as I said, this here isn't, um, isn't done yet. I'm not completely done with uh, how it works. Uh, I want to add more things to it and I maybe I'll even make it bigger so that it's not just 19 but more. Uh, and I'll have to test it out and see what works and what doesn't. But the different weather effects that I want to have is for instance I want sun and I want there to also therefore be what should I call it? Beating sun. That is just completely hot. And I'll have overcast. Now overcast itself could be that I would hinder some of these things right here. It could be that overcast uh, changes uh, how much time you can spend in the castle, I don't know yet. I'm thinking that is a good uh, possible negative thing that could happen. It really depends on the overcast, I would say, because mild overcast should probably be something that happens regularly. So regularly stopping them from 
uh, exploring isn't that fun but I'll check it out I'll find something then I want to have rain rain is very important and fog and storm then lastly I'll add wind uh, as like if it's really windy then yeah you things will be flying especially in a castle where stuff is loose then things will be fine so yeah that's basically what I'm going to do and I'll work on this a little bit more uh, later and I'll try to figure out different patterns and so on on this one also later uh, maybe I'll make a separate video out of it maybe I won't um, but yeah that's it for today so yeah thanks you guys for watching and see you on rest next time just remember to like share and subscribe and share this with your GM because he'll probably like it